Hello, and welcome to Speedy Checkout, brought to you by the Officially Unofficial Geek Channel. My name is Carrie Quinn. I am the OUG, and tonight I'm going to be talking to you about the last days of the Midnight Ramblers. Um, so let me just go ahead, and we're going to get into the who, what, and when right away on this book before we even get into our Speedy Checkout review. So um, I have a way that we're going to go ahead and do that and keep it all on the up and up. So just hang tight with me for a moment and we'll get this going. Okay. So uh, the book I read is The Last Days of the Midnight Ramblers. Um, it's a novel by Sarah Tomlinson and it was published in 2024 by Flat Iron Books. And um, Sarah Tomlinson, she, her biography um, on the back flap of this book says she is a former music journalist, has been a ghostwriter since 2008, penning more than 20 books, including five New York Times bestsellers. In 2015, she published the father-daughter memoir, Good Girl. She wrote The Last Days of Midnight Ramblers, her first novel, in between assignments for a who's who of celebrity clients. And you can get more information from flatironbooks.com. Okay, so that's basically the who, what, when kind of situation. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do. Show you guys how I'm doing this. Um, I have a stop timer, a timer. Okay. So speedy checkout. If you have not seen it before, I basically tell you, um, my review of something in 10 minutes or less. So whew, the last days of the midnight ramblers and start. Okay. So the last day of the midnight ramblers, basically, um, it sounds like um, Miss Tomlinson is basically taking a little bit of inspiration from her work as a ghostwriter. Cause basically what this is, is a ghostwriter. Mari is hired on to do the ghostwriting for a former model, former, um, rock and roll wife, um, Anka. Um, she is brought in to do the ghostwriting and has kind of a rough go of it. She, um, Anka was uh, a, uh, a member of the entourage, married to a few members, uh, a couple members actually, of the band The Midnight Ramblers. Um, the, her first husband was found dead face down in a pool by very suspicious circumstances. Now, this has been one of those kind of uh, rock and roll um, uh, mysteries since then. That was in 1969. Okay. So Mari comes in here. She's got a lot of uh, background writing about music, dealing with music. Um, she comes in with her own, um, kind of, uh, uh, I, I hate to put it this way, but it really is kind of like daddy issues. And she comes in and, um, she comes in like, it seems like the character is wanting to tell Anka's story, but is also, trying to solve this mystery from 1969 um, about how this dude actually died, um, which is kind of weird. I guess they have to have a plot to the book, but like it just always seemed kind of weird um, that she's a ghostwriter. She's supposed to be working for this woman, and um, she actually spends a lot more time, a lot of the time, trying to figure out what happened to this one dude. So... Um, she does some very questionable things and, um, ends up, um, getting, uh, fired from the job and upon getting fired from the job, she's like, man, no, I really want this gig. Right. So she makes a hail Mary and goes and talks to one of the members of the midnight ramblers, which is also, uh, the father and, um, former, uh, former, uh, um, former husband of Anka. And when she arrives, she ends up getting the job of writing his, his, uh, um, uh, his biography ghost writing for him. And, but she's still not off of this whole, like, despite the fact that 
Like, it seems that she made these moves that kind of, like, cost her the entire um, first job. She continues with that process in the second job and really trying everyone's nerves and everything like that. And the thing is, is I guess that way, if you didn't do something like that, you wouldn't have a story. But the story ends up being she's trying to figure out how to write this novel, um, this uh, not novel, but this biography um, for this rock and roll legend and also trying to figure out what happened to this one dude back in 1969. Um, through the course of all this, um, it's just this big mystery. It's a little bit of a sp suspense. Wasn't aware um, in the beginning of much suspense. That kind of just really built up um, by the time she got really into things in the, the writing of the rock stars memoir. She ends up reconnecting with Anka and Anka um, kind of just like, you know, is having a really hard, tough time getting somebody new to understand her and know her. So um, what happens is, is you get all these things happening. She ends up, you know, dealing with, with wanting to still write Anka's novel, wanting to write uh, the rock star Dante's novel um, autobiography but also really wanting to solve this whole thing about Maul, uh, this dude, he, he was the original um, founder of the Rambler's death to prove that it was not a accident, but was actually a murder. Or just to get the actual honest to God truth about what happened there. This is basically the plot in a nutshell of uh, like the beginning you know, like things you should know about why anyone would want to read this book. Um, the flow of the book is not really all that uh, bad, actually. Like, um, I'm going to say that some of the chapters are a little bit long. If you're one of those people like me that has to read an entire chapter in one sitting, can't leave a chapter unfinished and go do something else, um, know that when you're sitting down to read this, it's like 20 page chapters. 15 to 20 page or more chapters. Okay. So that could be a deciding factor for me. Um, that was one of those things that was kind of a little bit off putting, um, involving reading this book because you had to sit there and like, for me personally, I have that issue. I don't know if you will, but I want to make sure you have the information handy so that, you know, these are some long ass chapters. Okay. Um, but the flow of them works really well. And once you get into a chapter, especially if a lot of things are happening in that chapter to move the story along the pace, it works pretty well. There are some moments in here where like you have information or you're supposed to be finding out information and it's not uh, about the mindset and what's happening actually in the story for the characters where it's a little too vague in spots. Like if you're supposed to be kind of on this journey with Mari, the ghost writer, um, when she knows things, the reader should be knowing those things as well. The reader shouldn't have to be sitting there and guessing on, on certain things and, and the aspects of certain things that are happening when they're happening in a story, especially when they're big moments right? And I don't want to give anything too much away because I want you to be able to understand that there are going to, that, uh, there are going to be moments where you might have to sit there and think like, okay, did this actually happen or did it not happen? And there's moments where if Mari knows it, it should be clear to the reader. And there are times that me as a reader, it wasn't necessarily clear on, um, the story has a, you know, a, a clear beginning, clear middle, clear end, clear climax, interesting climax, um, and falling action. So, I mean, it's got all the variables there. Just there's the, the issues with the, um, the chapter length and not knowing exactly what's going on when it appears that Mari knows what's going on. So overall, um, couple different weird things that were happening there that um there are a couple there were a few moments where i was like but mari obviously knows what's going on but you don't as the reader so um 
that was kind of shaky for me. So those things, uh, uh, paired with the fact that it was actually an interesting story to tell. And, you know, you had to have drama where it was, and you had to, you know, if you wanted to tell the story, you had to do it in this way. Um, but overall, if I'm going to have like a, a star system, I would give the, the last days of the midnight ramblers, a good solid three, three and a half out of five stars. Um, just because there are a couple things there, um, that were issues for me, um, in what I knew and the chapter length was an issue at times. So last of the midnight ramblers by Sarah Tomlinson. It's a good solid, you know, fun read, just, you know, go into it knowing those are factors in your reading that there might be moments where you're sitting there like, okay, I don't know what happened, but it seems like they know what happened. So, okay, what happened? And then you have to take a while to try to figure it out, or it takes a while to tell you. And it, it yeah, I just, I feel like, I feel like that if Mari knows something, that's the ghostwriter, the main character in the story, the reader should know something, especially if we're on this journey with her. But anyways, guys, those kind of vague moments paired with the, the length of some of these chapters, um, really kind of brought it to the three to 3.5 out of five stars for me. And that's basically my review guys. Uh, the, um, yeah, so let's go ahead. 35 seconds to spare. <laughs> um, but yep, yeah, that's it for me. This is the last days of the Midnight Ramblers, guys. And I got it from my local library, so support your local library. Um, other than that, this has been Speedy Checkout, brought to you by the Officially Unofficial Geek channel. Again, my name is Carrie. I'm the Officially Unofficial Geek. I'm the OUG. And until next time, keep your eyes and ears open. If you see something, say something. And remember, the complacent never make a difference. So go out there and make a difference. And until next time, I'll be seeing ya. Bye.